What's going on, gardeners? It's Tuesday, June 20th, and it has been brutally hot and dry here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina. And on today's video, I'm going to share with all of you my secret weapon for gardening in extreme heat and drought to keep your gardens as healthy and productive as possible. How many times have you heard this exact same story? You endure the long, cold winter. You finally get your plants out in early spring. It's starting to warm up. Everything is looking great. You're just about about to start your harvests and then a horrible heat wave comes in, drought sets in, and it just destroys your entire garden when things are just starting to look so good. Plants usually react to drought and heat stress by dropping flowers and dropping fruits because those fruits hold on to a lot of water, so they let go of them in order to preserve their internal water supply. Furthermore, drought and heat stress also weaken a plant. So in their weakened, stressed out state, they are much more likely to be overwhelmed by pests and diseases because weak plants are simply more susceptible to problems than strong plants. And let's not forget about the stress of the hot sun itself. Very hot, strong sun can burn the leaves and the fruits of the plants. We call this sun scald. So all of these different effects can take plants that were perfectly healthy and destroy them in a very short period of time. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell to receive new video notifications and check out our Amazon store and Spreadshop links in the video description for everything I use in my garden and awesome custom designed apparel and other gear. Your support is greatly appreciated. It seems like this is the same old story year in, year out. And as they say, the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different outcome. So last year, I decided to do something about it. I went out and I purchased two large 40 40% shade tarps and I erected them above my potted fruit trees and above my garden itself and I evaluated the performance of the plants underneath the shade tarp to see if they had any benefit and what I found was surprising or maybe it wasn't all that surprising it was substantially cooler and less oppressive underneath that shade tarp so all of the plants were growing in a much more accommodating environment they still got more than enough sunshine to flower and fruit for me and produce pretty well but they didn't deal with the negative effects of the hot sun and I didn't have to water them nearly as much because it was so much cooler under them and as you can imagine they performed a whole lot better and I posted a video sharing my results raving about the success however because I had to run the experiment it was posted later into the summer so it was too late for many of you to take advantage of this discovery so this year I wanted to proactively get ahead of the game but before I go any further I know many of you will have questions as to where you you can get one of these shade tarps that I'm using to cover my plants. I will make sure to link to this exact shade tarp down in the video description in my Amazon storefront link underneath the garden accessories list, but I will also place a direct link in the video description for your convenience as well. It is 40%, it is super high quality, and it comes in many different sizes, and it is shockingly affordable and very well made. So impressed was I with the results of the shade cloth last year that this year I decided to double down, and over the winter I rebuilt my entire container garden area and doubled the space in order to accommodate more plants and you can see the shade house that I've built for myself right now and I couldn't be happier with the way it turned out. Now usually here on the southeast coast June is part of our rainy season and we tend to get a lot of precipitation this time of year however for whatever reason it has been a hot bone dry June. We got our first rain shower this morning for the first time in three weeks and even with that rain shower I have only recorded half an inch of rain all month so my plants were getting bone dry and scorched and up until this point I had the absolute best tomatoes and cucumber plants that I've ever grown here in North Carolina since I moved here and the hot dry conditions were finally starting to take its toll and I knew I needed to do something and protect them from the conditions I was starting to see the negative effects and I want to show you exactly what I'm talking about now at the end of the video I'll explain to you exactly how I erected this shade house right here but the first thing I want to show you is the effect it's having on my plants now it's very hot almost 90 degrees Fahrenheit right now 
but when I lift the shade cloth and I walk under here, it is like a totally different world. It is like somebody turned on the air conditioning. And up until this point, my tomatoes were looking absolutely beautiful. Everything was doing great. Uh, this is the best they've ever looked this far into the year. And I also have some insect netting over the tomatoes too, because I'm starting to get ridiculous amounts of tomatoes, and I want to also be able to protect them from sun scald and from pests. So I'll take you over to my cucumber plants right here. And these cucumber plants were putting on insane amounts of fruit when the season was young and the temperatures were still reasonable. And that's why you can see uh, fruit still down here at the bottom. But I noticed that as soon as it started getting really hot, I was starting to get fruit drop. Uh, these 90 degree dry temperatures were taking its toll on the plants and they were dropping their fruit in response. So since I have the shade cloth up here keeping everything so much cooler, now it's starting to hold on to the fruits again and I anticipate that some of these other small cucumbers uh, are also going to hold now that they're under much cooler conditions and I think things are going to look a whole lot better for the short term. You can also see how much less powerful the sun is underneath the shade tarp versus if I were to step outside right now and then you just get blasted with our nuclear reactor sun. Now obviously we've already gone over the benefits of this shade cloth when it comes to reducing damage from the sun and also lessening how often you have to water your plants. However, there are three additional side benefits that this shade cloth will give me. Number one, it will pretty much keep all birds off of my fruit. So if you have problems with birds coming and pecking on your fruits, well, this is also going to act as some type of bird netting to protect you from damage from birds. Number two, now that a lot of my fruits are starting to ripen, they are going to start attracting insect pests, which can badly damage all of the fruits that I worked so hard to grow. Well, this netting is also going to act as a sort of insect netting. It's not going to be 100% because it doesn't completely completely cover the structure. However, it will do a lot to keep most of the insect pests off of my plants, especially when paired with additional insect netting. And three, one of the most damaging things that happens here in the southeast is not necessarily harm from the sun, but the torrential rainfall that comes in during a thunderstorm season. The heavy rains often destroy the plants by spreading disease and also splitting all of the fruits. It's very destructive. Now, this is not going to completely block rainfall by any means because it's a mesh shade cloth so rain will make its way through however we had some light rain earlier this morning and it completely kept the light rain off of my plants and it will do quite a bit to lessen the intensity of the rainfall so while it won't keep things 100% dry it will create a lot less splashing and keep some of the rain out so you will have less disease less pests and less issues with uh, your fruit splitting and things like that so it's really a win on many different fronts and I just want to take you through a very quick walkthrough so you can see just how beautiful everything looks underneath the shade tarp. The figs are loving it being in the cooler weather and the tomatoes are just, they're just bursting at the seams with fruit. Just look at those monsters. Everything's looking so great. The cherry tomatoes are popping like crazy. I work so hard all year to do this, and then when the rains come and destroy my tomatoes, boy, is it heartbreaking. But knowing that I'll be able to keep a lot of these, uh, a lot of the heavy rains off of my plants right now makes me really optimistic, and I think we're going to have a much better season here underneath the shade cloth. Now that I've explained to you all of the benefits of shade cloth, I'll explain to you how I built this structure. Earlier in the winter, I showed you how to build a really cheap and easy hoop house using nothing but T-posts and half-inch PVC conduit. And I'll make sure to link to that video down in the video description that will show you the step-by-step -step guide. And then after that, I pulled over this very large shade cloth, which is 20 feet by 48 feet. It's the biggest one that they had. Then, in order to initially secure the shade cloth, I used these half inch PVC conduit clamps. So they go above the top. There's five different clamps on there to try and hold it up top. Then I walked against all the sides and I clamped them down. Then, once all the sides were clamped down, I took a simple uh, clothesline. I bought a 100 foot clothesline and I wrapped that in and out of the grommets so it would be uh, basically weave in and out of the t-post so right here the clothesline goes behind the t-post then it comes back out then it goes behind again and then that clothesline that you see under here 
it goes along the entire side of the structure and then it comes back around and using the clips and this clothesline i'm very easily and cheaply able to secure the t-post down now i'm probably going to have to take the clothesline down and weave them in and out of more holes uh, just in case to give it some more structure i did this really quickly a few days ago just to secure it before the sun set so i'll probably redo that when i get a little bit better weather however uh, everything is just fine right now for the time being so just using clotheslines and this really uh, these really cheap PVC snap clamps, I was able to hold the entire thing down. And like I said, don't you worry, I will link to every single individual item down in the video description. Now look, I know that most of you aren't going to go and build some giant structure over your entire garden like I did. And that's okay. You don't have to. You don't have to have a massive setup like this. All you have to do is just go out and get yourself a small shade cloth and throw it over your plants to give them a little bit of extra protection. They come as small as 10 feet by 12 feet and they're really affordable, way cheaper than you probably think they are. And if you want to go the extra mile, just run into Lowe's or Home Depot or some other big box store and buy yourself some half inch PVC pipe or some PVC electrical conduit and just bend it to make a little hoop over your rows and then use the shade cloth like a row cover and clip them on with some clamps or put some bricks down at the bottom to keep it from blowing away. Just do something to give your plants a little bit of extra protection and they will love you for it. I'm telling you, this little step can have big results in your garden. It had dramatic results on my garden last year, and since I started even earlier this year, I think the results are going to be even better. So everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and please ring that notification bell so you're notified when we release more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I mentioned in this video, or that I use in my garden in general, they are all linked down below in my Amazon storefront in the video description and I place some direct links as well while you're there. And while you're there, check out my spread shop for custom merch if you want to support the channel. I will also drop links to all of my DIY builds that are all organized in a playlist that can give you some easy ideas for how to make some DIY hoop structures. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see all of you again on the next video. Hey Dale, guess what? We're out walking at the pond as usual and guess what we see over there? That's a gator sunning on the side of the pond. Well, he would be sunning if there was any sun to be found in the sky. Look, he's getting back in the water. Look at him go. That's a big boy right there. Pretty cool, Dale. A lot of people don't know that there's gators all over southern North Carolina. They start at the outer banks and they work their way down. The further south you go, the more you'll find.